Apparently, half of key hospital doctors aren't prepared to cope with a major incident like a terrorist attack or major public fire. New research has found that even though hospitals have had to keep a major incident plan since 2004, key responders are less prepared today than they were uh, less prepared than in 2006. Researchers say this is worrying, but it is a matter of confidence rather than skill. Well, I'm joined now by a &E locum doctor, Dr Kishan Rees. Um, uh, and Dr Rees, uh, why, why do some doctors think it's important to have this training, these preparations? Uh, so Kishan's absolutely fine. And I would say I think that I'm glad you said apparently, um, because I think the, there's certain things with this survey. First, they only interviewed less than 200 people, which accounts for less than 0.2% of hospital doctors. I think that's important to put it out there. Um, and had they asked consultants, the people that are in charge of operation, operating these kind of plans, um, you'd have got a very different answer. But of course, training is important for these situations. Um, and any extra training um, is helpful um, and is a good thing. I mean, I can go into what it's like on the front line if mm. that's helpful. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it struck me, though, that looking at this, that when we looked at, at, at atta uh, terrorist attacks uh, in the past, we look at incidents like Grenfell Tower, uh, actually the local hospitals, the A&Es, have all coped admirably well. There is a, a system where people will come in when they're not in shift, everybody pulls together. They are used to having a lot of hard stuff thrown at them and, and rising above, aren't they? No, absolutely. I mean, the public services, so doctors, fire, police, ambulance, the whole lot... Um, have been working in difficult environments for the last 10 years because austerity has had an impact on frontline resources. Um, and the General Medical Council, our regulator, do a report every year called the State of Medical Education and Practice. Um, and in that report in 2017, they said that the, there's a state of unease gripping the medical profession and they're saying that the effects of austerity are being felt on the front line in terms of education and training. So, yes, people do cope admirably at the moment and people go the extra mile. Uh, but my concern would be how long is that sustainable um, in terms of I only work in any part time. I couldn't do it full time. Um, I've moved work in industry now. Um, so I've got the utmost respect for my colleagues that do it full time in difficult circumstances. And ultimately, they need our support. So what is it like when when the bomb goes off, when the attack happens and, and you have you know, hundreds of people well, coming I've, your way? I've never been in that kind of situation, thankfully, touch wood, and I hope I never am. And I think lots of doctors won't be. Um, but, you know, as we were talking about before and air, lots of doctors are in stressful circumstances and they're used to working in those environments. And I think the key thing is, is when this sort of thing happens, that you've got enough staff. In the NHS at the moment, there's 100,000 vacancies, 10,000 of which are doctors. And these are issues that we need to address, such that if something happens untoward, then we're in the best possible place to deal with it. Um, and certainly 10 years ago, my first job as a doctor was a supernumerary role. As long as I did 40 hours a week, I could go to clear, a thin, a clinic, theatre, I could do anything, as long as I did my 40 hours. So that's a pure training job. Mm. The number of pure training roles um, are getting less and less, and it's more service provision, because obviously we're working in an environment where there's lots of um, rotor gaps and we need more staff in the NHS. So we're obviously going to be in a better position if we're appropriately staffed and stocked which we're not at the moment. But, it, you know, if, if you staffing can't come, and as you say, you know, uh, belts have had to be tightened across the board, do you think that, that this kind of training would actually help? Well, there's... I th training for bad situations can never be unhelpful. I think it's always useful to do it. But I think when you're operating in an environment where cuts are across the board, as you've said, um, something has to give, OK? And, you know, your viewers will know that if they're waiting two weeks to see a GP and they're waiting hours in A&E to see a doctor, if in that situation said, oh, we're just preparing for... We're practising for a terrorist... It just wouldn't happen, for practising for that kind of incident. Mm. So we need to create an environment and a culture where NHS staff are looked after and cared for, such... And there's enough... Um, so if somebody's sick, right, the people on shift will just have to work double as hard. Now, I don't think that is sustainable in the long term moving forward. Um, and we seem to be in a bit of a spending spree at the moment with, you know, fairly dodgy parliamentary arithmetic. So we're going to look like there could potentially be an election because there's lots of spending promises. And one thing that I personally would like to see is that this is sustained over the long term and it's not just a throwaway thing um, which gets forgotten very quickly because it's certainly needed. Uh, frontline staff across the board would welcome it. OK, Dr Keishan-Rees, good to talk to you. Thanks very much for coming in. No worries. Cheers. Our parents, he said...